well, let me show you this. This is a typical example of the same variety, just growing under different conditions. Wow. I mean, this is also very confusing. Sorry to interject, <laughs> but this is also very confusing because if somebody wants to say, well, this is a new cultivar, you almost have to grow it in such a range of conditions to make sure that it looks so different from yes. another cultivar. Yes. Uh, you do need to grow them in different conditions. You do need to grow them for a while. Watch them as they change. This one is, was grown in the house in lower light. This one was grown in the greenhouse here. Wow. And the same variety, just different light conditions. It's amazing because you could say you say that the, the leaves and the flowers can change color, which seems so unique. Right, right. And you can see how they've changed from this to this, almost almost completely silver. And it's, then it's funny that. because the one in the house that is silver seems almost more uh, interesting than the one in more the green. More desirable, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, they can change a lot. That's why it's hard to really identify begonias. So is there like, um, is there like a standard when you're cultivating begonias, like an unsaid or said standard that they say, oh, grow it over X amount of time in various different conditions before you actually name a cultivar, or is it just kind of, you know? Uh, yeah, they say you should grow it for, you know, at least a couple of years. And of course, you want to propagate it, make sure those uh, propagations are identical to the original plant, because uh, that's the way you're going to get a cultivar. It's going to be uh, you know, genetically identical. So, uh, yeah, they say uh, at least propagate it three generations, and you should grow them for at least a couple of years uh, just to watch and see what they do, because as they mature, the leaves can uh, change. Um, flowers can change. Sometimes if you're growing them for flowers, they won't bloom for until they're two or three or even four years old, or even more. So what cuttings do we have here? Okay, uh, like we said earlier, begonias will root anywhere on the stem. They tend to uh, root a lot where they're cut, but they will root anywhere on this stem. And so uh, commercially, I like to get two tips. And I will, we will, of course, uh, as plants grow, they release moisture out of the leaves. So when you take a cutting, they don't have any roots to bring moisture in. So you want to reduce the leaf surface. Some people will cut uh, a large leaf off like this. I usually try to avoid that and just uh, just leave one leaf on it. Is it because you don't want to invite any kind of bacteria or fungus or is uh, there a reason That's part for that? of it. But right here, if trying to sell this plant, say if this was rooted, this would look bad when you're trying to sell it. Right. So uh, generally, I like to keep the leaves whole. I like to, uh, you know, root at least two cuttings together. I use uh, just a potting mix. Here we uh, root directly in our potting mix. It's faster. <laughs> Stick the two cuttings in there, and then you press the soil up against the cuttings. So, uh, and that is basically it. Now I like to uh, arrange my cuttings if I've got two leaf cuttings. 
I like to put them in a pot like this. Right, yeah. Not like this. Yeah. Or like that. Because once they're rooted, it just makes a nicer plant. And let's see. Cut off. Generally, if it's a larger leaf, I leave uh, one large leaf on. And again, I'm just putting two cuttings together, putting them right close together, right in the same hole, sticking them down. Uh, once you've done a lot of this, you realize uh, the stronger ones that you can just stick in the soil. Some of them will break a little more easily. So you have to make a... a little divot. Well, I use my finger. <laughs> <laughs> so you can make the uh, a hole with your finger. You could use a pencil to make a hole. And it doesn't matter you if, if use... you're doing a cutting and it has flowers on it. Will that affect it in any kind of way? In rooting? Uh, I like to take the flowers off. This is dredgii. This was like we looked at, and this is a blind cutting. That's right. So I would not root this. Unless I was desperate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should cut the flowers off. Uh, because it's just extra energy. Extra right? energy, and uh, it can rot. It can get fungus in the flowers, get too much moisture in there. So it's better just to take the flowers off. Now, if you have these on a mist bench, and obviously they're, they don't yet have roots, then the leaves will probably transpire a lot less, right? It'll be right. less taxed on the plant. Right. We put them on the mist. In your house, you can put it in a plastic bag, a Ziploc bag. What you want to do is increase the humidity around the plant and keep it from losing moisture. So on the mist, the, the mist, the water on there keeps uh, the leaf from losing moisture and that gives it a chance to root. Do you ever have to use an antifungal with these or are they not prone to fungal <clears throat> attack? We usually do drench them with a the fungicide because uh, just to be safe. And it's, it's a, but you know, in the home environment, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, some people use rooting hormones, but uh, we don't use rooting hormones here. I've never used rooting hormones unless someone forced me to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the begonias just root very easily. And of course, if you're making a, a pot for yourself, you can put three or four cuttings in there. That'll make a fuller, bushy plant faster. As a general rule, we put two cuttings in there. Like I said with uh, this one, this is uh, Moonlight Bay. That's nicely rooted. Huge <laughs> stem, yeah. huge leaves. It's, you can't get two cuttings in a pot. No, and can you actually then, when would you move that to a larger pot or would you sell it like that? I guess you could do either or. Uh, well, we would sell it like this. Uh, ideally, it wouldn't be quite this tall. <laughs> but begonias, when you, when you have more begonias than you're selling, you can't stop them from growing. <laughs> they just keep growing. So, uh, but, the, uh, once uh, the uh, customer gets the plant, uh, they should put it somewhere and let it give it a, a week or so, week, two weeks, maybe to acclimate, adjust from being in a box for several days. And then if it was, say, this size, it's really time to repot it. This plant here. Ah, oh, this is Don Miller. Yep, there's your <laughs> there's your namesake. You didn't name it though either. Somebody I did not name you. this. This was hybridized by a fellow from uh, Bolverde, Texas, near San Antonio. And uh, he named it after me. But you can see this cutting. Oh yeah. Most of those roots have formed right where it was cut. Uh, it's got a few up on the stem, and they can form them up on the stem, but most of them are right here where it's cut. 
no rooting hormone. Again, I like to put those together like that. Just makes a, a prettier plant like this. Oh yeah. Once it's rooted, uh, Don Miller roots pretty fast, usually two weeks under the mist and uh, grows fast too. Now, do you find that if it comes from the same seedling, like you showed us the other one came from the same uh, two parents, do you find that their uh, ability to root and everything is very similar to one another or nearly the same? Or have you ever had one where you're like, this is a completely different persnickety variety compared to this one? Uh, yes, uh, generally they're very similar, but <laughs> there's always an exception. There could be, now, uh, from this cross, Don Miller, Maurice Amy, and Beningo, another one. Uh, Don Miller, Beningo are very fast. Maurice Amy is a little bit slower. So, uh, you know, they have a lot of character. It's just like uh, your family. <laughs> your brothers and sisters may be very similar to you, but not identical. <laughs> exactly. And one may just be a hell of a lot slower. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay, that's... Uh, well, here at the nursery, we fill our pots up with the soil, moisten the soil, and then uh, stick the cuttings. And then we drench it with a fungicide and put it on the mist. And we're showing, uh, you're showing the cuttings right now of like some cane begonias. So you're, you're able to, you know, stick them in very easily. Whereas some you would do leaf cuttings without, right? Right. We're doing uh, uh, cane begonias. It's faster to root them from a stem. Uh, most of the canes you can't root from a leaf. So they're a little bit different. Uh, you could root them from a, uh, well, actually this was not a tip cutting. Oh yeah, look at that. So the tip was going out here. So uh, depending on the variety, some of them branch out very easily. And so you can use a stem cutting. Do you think it's common in the wild that they just like easily break off as a cane and then just root up next to the plant? Yes. Is that a possibility? Yes. I think that's uh, one ad adaptation for, uh, you know, just uh, staying alive and moving around. I used to say plants didn't move, but they do. <laughs> we they, know better now. They move in different ways. <laughs> They're very slow, but they do move. Um, so that's really about it, unless you had any other questions. Nope, I think that's very good. That's solid, um, Don. I really appreciate that. Okay. Well, thank you, and uh, happy begonia growing. One thing I might say before you cut me off, uh, in the house, you know, you don't have a mist bed. Stick your cuttings. Just put them in a plastic bag, put them in a place where there's a bright light. Should be moist, not too wet, but moist. Put it in a bag where there's a bright light, no hot sun. If you have hot sun, it'll uh, cook them. Uh, but bright light that keeps the humidity, and they're very easy to grow uh, from a cutting in the house. Call that plastic bag the pure man, uh, the poor man's humidifier. Right, right. <laughs> it works like a charm, though. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Don. Okay. If you enjoy our videos of botanical knowledge and wonderment, do consider subscribing, hitting the notifications button, and even tipping. Your viewership and support matters. We commit 1% of our Google AdSense proceeds to plant conservation here on Plant One On Me, which we began back in 2021. And we're sowing and growing up some cool gardens and homesteading projects over at our sister channel at Flock Finger Lakes. So if you haven't yet checked that out, do give it a look. See you in the next video.